Hi, everybody. Welcome to the God Place. Why do we call it the God Place? Because there's only love here. Today, my friend Victoria Reynolds is with us, and I am super, super excited. She lives in my hometown of Redondo Beach. Her website is Victoria Reynolds dot com and she has a wonderful show called fearless and free today what we're going to do is talk about the 3d to 5d but that real important step called the 4d so any of you who have never heard of what 3d to 5d is we are going to pretend this is like 3D to 5D to don't forget 4D 101, right, Victoria? Right. All right. So let's talk to the people that know nothing about what 3D to 5D even means, because I know you talk to people that that's your thing, right? You're talking about that. So you usually talk to audiences that know what 3D to 5D is. Nobody in this audience really will. So would you please share that? Because I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, so I will do that. A lot of my audience actually isn't that advanced. So one of the things I know I'm here to teach people what spirit calls spiritual newbies. And so these are people that are in the, are just now at the beginning of their spiritual awakening experience. And so we have the, the great awakening that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So I discovered 3D, 4D, 5D in actually in 2010. I can tell you exactly to the day that I discovered it. <laughs> and so it was November 1st, 2010. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, had never heard of dimensions or any of that before. I was a spiritual newbie. So I began my spiritual awakening as a result of the 2008 recession economic crash. So one thing that that the planet is basically seeing right now is that when we go through a breakdown, it creates space for a breakthrough. Now, some people have their midlife crisis and it becomes a crisis and they stay in crisis for the rest of their lives. A crisis is also an opportunity. So for me, it was the 2008 recession completely wiped me out financially. It was you know, devastating for my marriage. I discovered that both of my kids had learning disorders and I, I was at the very, very bottom of what felt like a bottomless pit. And because I had been essentially, I think that's when they say that, that it takes sometimes bring brought to our knees in order to have the spiritual awakening. So that's what happened with me. And that's what's happening collectively on the planet right now. That's why so many people are waking up right now. We had a huge awakening as a result of 2008 and having a huge awakening now as a result of 2020. So this is the first time it's ever happened on an entire planetary scale all at once. So from that perspective, it's a very exciting time to be alive because the entire world is having a spiritual awakening. And so back when I was at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, I was practically an atheist. I wanted nothing to do with spirituality of any kind, thinking that it was the same thing as religion. And I didn't have any interest and I was perfectly content being an atheist until my daughter, who was six years old at the time, said to me one day, mommy, the kids and I were at school were talking about God and I lit into her. I said, that word is not allowed in our house. Daddy, wow. I believe in God. Wow. And she started crying. Oh, Wow. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, it's not that we don't believe in God, but God for us is more like mother nature. Mm -hmm. That just came off the tip of my tongue. I hadn't even considered the concept of God for like 20 years. And, uh, and she said, oh, okay. <laughs> she, she got it. Like that made perfect sense to her. Uh huh. And then another time she said, mommy, sometimes when I'm sleeping, I leave and I play with my angel friends. Wow. And never, never, ever brought up the term angels in my house. Wow. So she was part of my spiritual awakening. I call her my oh, catalyst. Oh, yeah. Because she made me start thinking. So I, I sat with that. I went, well, I better figure this out. <laughs> like, 
this is probably going to be part of a conversation moving forward. I need to figure out what this is for me. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, that was also right around the 2008 holy, what I can, I now call my holy shift it was my midlife um, awakening experience. And I refer to it as my holy shift, which is actually what I call what's happening on the planet right now, a collective holy shift. Mm -hmm. um, and they aren't fun and they aren't pretty and they are necessary. Right. So she got me thinking in that direction, just kind of sparked a little spiritual curiosity in me. And then at the same time, I started writing a book about growing up in this polygamist cult that I grew up in, and I wanted to learn how to be a public speaker. So we didn't have any money at all. And I wanted to learn some public speaking courses, but they're expensive. I mean, we're back to them being expensive again, you know, four or $5,000 for a, a coaching class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I found Toastmasters, and Toastmasters was only $40 for six months. Right. So uh -huh. I joined Toastmasters, and I found Toastmasters at um, some of your audience might know at the Agape International Spiritual Center, mm -hmm. and they had wow. a Toastmasters club there. So that just going to that Toastmasters program and being filled with spirit every wow. Saturday morning got spirit moving in my body. Wow. So that forty dollars was like one of the best. Well, you know, yeah, I'm a DTM with Toastmasters. Oh, are you? I, I finally got mine, and um, took me ten years to do it. Yes, I did finally get my DTM. Yes, and I ascended. Uh, Toastmasters is a big part of my ascension, and I'll tell you why. Because, in fact, that's how we met. I was trying to remember how we met before, and it was through a Toastmaster conversation or something. I think that's how I found you. Now, I think we met through the movie Pearl that I was working on. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. But I didn't know you were Toastmaster. Okay. Um, what I learned with Toastmasters, which when you do ascend, is how to take criticism and, and to be aware of your ego, right? Because we know that ego is, is the opposite of love and how to understand that when people project to you and it absorbs and hurts your feelings, then you're reacting with your ego. Right. But when you're in 5D, you instantly love them. You instantly forgive them. You instantly have compassion for them if it's ugly. But at the same time, suggestions can be made that are done with love. So Toastmaster was was really, really good for that. Plus, it moves you from your flight fight, primordial right. Uh, right. fear of speaking, of being in front of the tribe with fear that you might be kicked off the island, right? That you survive it. And then the more you do it, the more confident you have. And then I think through that, I found my full purpose. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? And Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I found with it too is that one, it it for me, Toastmasters is very transforming, especially if you belong to a club that's very open hearted, like the Agape one was. Wow! Where it no it creates space, no. creates space for people to speak their truths, and so all that truth that's stuffed down inside of us, and we we spend the first half of our life stuffing our story. Right. That Toastmasters allowed me to start bringing it back up again, and through the process of speaking it, it helped me transmute it. Wow. And and the other thing that I found with Toastmasters was, you know, when you make a, a presentation or a speech of some kind, that I started recognizing this, a voice that would come through that would say, talk about this. Right. Because it, did you find that too? Absolutely. I never, I, I got to a point where I never wrote my speeches. They would come to me in the car on the way to Toastmasters yes. and sitting in the audience. Yes. And then people would say, oh, Victoria, do you have a pocket speech? Like, sure do. <laughs> I've got chill bumps right now because I know exactly. So when I went into public speaking, I would say, tell me what, what you want them to know. You know, use me to, to let them know or one person in there what they need to know. And I would let that flow through me. Yep. You know, isn't it that just great? the vessel. 
Uh huh. You become a vessel, and which is what you're doing now, and what we're doing together right now. Mm -hmm. You're speaking for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit with the awakening is. Don't you feel this joy everywhere? With they're waking up. They're waking up. This spirits or angels, whatever we can't see. Look, they're waking up. They're waking up. It's so exciting right now. They they are they are rejoicing. Isn't it fun? And okay, so, so let's we, talk about 3D, 4D to 5D. Okay, so the reason I was bringing up, we didn't mean to go into toast smashes, but for those yeah, of you I know. Are, it is, it <laughs> is a phenomenal, it, it is a it phenomenal is. self-improvement program. Let's put it that way. It and is. it develops leadership too, which is, it turns Absolutely. out to be valuable. Absolutely. So, while I was there one morning, mm-hmm. I was looking at the community wall and I, there was a business card on the wall for a woman named um, Deborah Peach. Mm-hmm. I talk about her sometimes because she was uh, such an integral part of my waking up process. Right. And she had a, a business called Living Light Agency. And I had just decided I needed to write this book and I wanted to be an inspirational speaker. And so what she did was help to brand people. So I got in touch with her to talk to her about branding. And what happened was that she ended up doing a spiritual activation on me and created a bridge to my higher self. Oh, Not my goodness. all what I had hired her for. Oh, we my. Entirely different. That night, so I went to see her to talk about branding. Uh-huh. We did an activation instead. Uh-huh. That night, this was November 1st, 2010, mm-hmm. I was standing in my kitchen, and my daughter, again, six years old, said, Mommy, sometimes I can be in two places at the same time. Whoa. And I was like, that is so cool. I wish I could do that. Right. Oh my <laughs> These goodness. kids can do things before yes. they forget how before they forget how not to be. Yes. Yes. They can do anything. Yes. We just forget the gifts that we're born with. And yes. The kids are born with them. And then they forget because mm-hmm. fear teaches them to be afraid of their gifts or they shut down their their third eye. They shut down their spiritual abilities. Right. But so what happened is not long after that, I heard myself say, go take a bath. And so I, I have a, a big, beautiful bathtub that I almost never used. And I, what mom has time for a bath, really? <laughs> so I had a three-year-old and a six-year-old never use this big, beautiful bathtub. So right. I run the bath and my husband's in the bedroom and we were talking about aliens or something. And I said, yeah, I think they're in a different dimension. Mm-hmm. And that just, that just rolled off my tongue. I was like, that's weird. I don't know what. I don't anything about dimensions. I, oh I just my. rolled off my tongue and I laughed. I said, that's actually really funny because I, I don't know where that came from. But then a couple of minutes later, I'm sitting in the bathtub and I'm relaxing and I hear this voice. Now, it's not like I was hearing other voices. It was my own voice in my head uh-huh. that said, our worlds are about to collide. <gasps> oh, my goodness. So I'm sitting there in the bathtub, like, okay. I said, who is this? (laughs) And the voice came back, I am you in the fourth dimension, and our worlds are about to collide. Oh, my goodness. And so immediately, I go into, like, major PTSD panic attack. Oh, my goodness. Because I was raised with an end-of-the-world in this end of the world doomsday cults where I had been told as a child that another planet was going to smash into oh earth my gosh. and that, you know, the whole world was going to be destroyed except for 144,000 people. Oh my so God. I went into that PTSD <laughs> from being a child <laughs> and then logic set in and I sat there in the bathtub and I said, wait a minute, if another planet was going to smash into planet earth, I think we'd know about it by now. Mm-hmm. You know, in the 1960s, not so much. But can we, come on. We'd know if there was another planet that was hurling toward Earth. Yeah. And so I just sat there when I said, and I, I said that to myself, I, I, if there was another planet. And then my voice came back in and said, our dimensions are about to collide. Okay. And I said, well, I don't understand dimensions what do you mean and she said that's that's all for now and then the voice was gone 
So the next morning, I called up the woman who did the activation on me. And I said, oh, my gosh, this is what happened. She said, did anything happen? I said, yeah, you want to know what happened? The voice started talking to me, and she was telling me about the fourth dimension converging with the third dimension. And she was like, oh, yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've never, never heard the term before. Oh, my goodness. So... And I just left it at that. I just knew that the third dimension and fourth dimension were going to converge, and that was the end of that message. But we went on to do other spiritual work. We're talking about how the the uh, codes on our planet had been had been miscoded, and they needed to be recoded, and, and how the mm-hmm. the um, um, like the, the, the field, the magnetic field around our planet had been working properly, so the guardians couldn't actually see what was happening on Earth, and the, the guardians being the guardian angels and guardians of light that help to protect humanity and protect earth and help it to move forward. They couldn't see what's actually happening here because the, the, um, the shield around our planet wasn't working properly. It had the, their, some of the codes had been corrupted. So I started learning all kinds of crazy stuff. Like about codes and about codes dimensions. And stuff I'd never heard of, but spirit was explaining it to me. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And, yeah, and, and and so apparently I had opened a channel, mm-hmm. and, and angels started communicating with who, oh. who I call the guardians. The I call them the guardians of light. They are the the ascended masters who have volunteered to help humanity mm-hmm. and Earth herself continue to progress forward. So I started communicating with these guardians, and at one point, um, so she taught me how to do spiritual protection to make sure that no dark entities got mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And these and the angels would come in and talk to me. And I'm saying Jermaine, Yeshua, Archangel Michael, my this goodness. Is the whole crew that I work with. Uh-huh. And uh, oh, so they were explaining to me what's happening on the planet. I they were they were giving me visions of what would happen on the planet down the road. Uh-huh. Uh, all the corruption that's happening on right now, I've known about since since 2011 when it's when right. the corruption stuff all started being shown uh-huh. to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so one night in December of 2012, not mm-hmm. December 21st, it was like December 18th, I think. Right. I woke up in the middle of the night with these two words, convergence complete. I knew exactly what. Oh that my was. gosh, girl, you're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> my goodness. So the fourth dimension converged with the third dimension in December of 2012. People were looking for 2012 to be the end of the world and the I beginning remember, of the yeah. and all that stuff. Uh-huh. That is when it began. It just didn't look the way people expected it to look. So we were talking a little earlier before how when you are in the fourth dimension, how and you're ascending into the fifth, that you actually get sick. So tell us about that. Yeah. So, well, I didn't get I didn't get sick before before the fourth dimension converts. So, okay. What used to be the case that in order for us to move from the physical plane of Earth into the fifth dimension, which is a state of heaven, right? We had to physically die in order to ascend. Uh-huh. To this, uh-huh. to, the, to this heaven. Okay. Uh huh. What we've been doing is we've been learning how to bring heaven to Earth. On Earth, That's as it is on heaven. And, uh-huh. and as they've been saying for the last 2,000 years, yes. heaven on earth, heaven on yes. earth. The, on the, earth we are ascending to bring heaven on earth. That's what it is. Our energies, our consciousness is ascending. And as we ascend our consciousness, we bring heaven to earth. We no longer have to die to get to heaven. And, and your daughter, she knew that. And no, she didn't it, talk about that kind of stuff. I wish right. I would have, if I would have known then what I know now, I right. would have probably had some really, really good. Uh, yes, because, and, and you will be with your grandchildren, I promise. Because well, my daughter's not going to have any kids. I know, I know that already, but I think oh, my son okay. will. Yeah, well, maybe. But, but in your teachings, also, when you look at the world through the eyes of a child, you see the kingdom of heaven, and your daughter showed you that. Yeah. And got you on that path. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. You, to me, three year olds really are amazing. the hardest group on the planet. <laughs> really. Right. You know, well, the we, other, the other thing she told me, she said, mommy, I'm, I'm here to be like a light in a dark cave. Is, ah. Uh, so she knew when she was oh little that she's here to be a light. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it sounds to me that, that it, now, but she will. 
It sounds to me that when you were talking about learning disorder, it you know, it's interesting how people would categorize categorize someone like her as having that, which to me seems like she's she's in another, another place. You know, yeah, they actually don't have learning disorders. None of these kids do. Exactly. None of them do. They're exactly. just called that because they don't know what to label these kids who, exactly. who are neurodivergent. Is the is the present term for it? They I love don't that. know. They don't know what to do with these kids because they are wired differently. They are, they yes. are not meant to fit into the boxes. They have yes. they're born with spiritual gifts. A lot of autistic kids are incredibly telepathic. And, yes. You know, and they, they, so they're labeled with these, these learning disorders because they, because the system doesn't know how to teach to these kids. It's not the kids, it's the system. You know, it, it's interesting. My granddaughter, she looked at me and she says, you know, Nana, I used to be your grandmother, but this time you're my grandmother. Isn't that cute? I know. And, and I, <laughs> so I'm thinking, which one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, the, but the kids, the kids coming in are being born with their memories intact, which I find yes. fascinating. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's so, they're so wise and people need to listen, listen to somebody four, five, six, and under. Listen right. to what and they, they have They to start say. to forget around the age of seven, they start to forget. And then around the age of 11, the, the third eye shuts off. And, exactly. And yeah. I, and I heard, but you know what I also just heard? That the star seeds that are coming now aren't going to forget. The, the no, little ones they're, now, well, they're not going to forget. They're not going to forget. They're coming in, for one, they're coming in with full memory. Uh -huh. And they're choosing parents who are going to help them remember. So in my daughter's case, she doesn't remember, but I won't let her forget. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, you and know, her, in the, and her third eye never shut off. She can actually still see interdimensionally. In the Celtic tradition, what they say is the angel comes to you when you're seven years old and whispers in your ear, it's time to forget. So my idea has always been, you know, when you come in, if a baby could talk, they would completely blow you away, right? So they come in knowing who they are. They acclimate to the human experience. They forget, and then they get to remember again, right. which is the pr process that you and I've gone through. But now these, new, these children that are being born now are coming in knowing who they are, and they won't forget which is part of the transcension or the trend, this whole thing that's happening on our planet. Right. You know, Victoria, didn't you always feel like this was going to happen, but it's happening in our lifetime. It's I happening know. in well, our because, because, lifetime. Because we've been talking about it for what? Thousands of years and everybody thinks yes. that it actually is. Yes. That's what's tripping me out. And now it doesn't look the way people expect it to look because, yes. because all of our religions have had their interpretation of what they think ascension looks like. Uh, Ultimately, yeah. it's not, it isn't anything like it's been interpreted to look like. It is about our consciousness right. still being physically present, our consciousness ascending right. into the fifth dimension. Now we have to go through the fourth dimension to get the fifth dimension. That's the part that people are not getting talk about that I'm, okay uh, okay so so the message that came in with with the fourth dimension when i started asking about it the first thing i was shown is that we would experience a duality reality because both the third dimension and the fourth dimension are coexisting on our planet at the same time that explains why when we look at how the planet has been for the last 10 years and especially the last five years how there is so much duality Wow. The division on our planet right now is palpable, as we know. You know, um, it's, it's funny. Yesterday I saw this big demonstration in England, and I just cried. I just cried because the whole planet, it, it made me understand we're all coming together with the understanding how good it feels that we are one and knowing that we are one, right? That accumulatively... Uh, we can, we are the people, we the people, we are this planet. Because I remember when the darkness first started, especially in our political world, right? I looked at my husband, I said, how many of them are there? 
in Congress and all that. And he said, mm, about five, 600 people. And I said, how many of us are there? Right. <laughs> Billions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they know that. That's why they, that's why they need to keep us divided because yes. that's how it is. Right. Divide, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. That's yes. a, that is the basic no, rule in war divide and conquer as long as they can keep us divided against ourselves we cannot right. unify right once humanity unifies the people at the top will be toppled because that's just how it works so they and feed us just enough just enough to keep to, to keep the to, to keep the rebels from uprising to keep the people at the very bottom from right. uprising they feed right. us just enough to keep it's like throwing crumbs to the or just enough that we don't uprise. And I remember on your last show, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Right. You're that's, speaking my language. It. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, well, you saw like the, my last couple of Spirit Left Sundays where a spirit speaks to me through song. And so I just, then I start singing in a song and then I ask, why am I, why is this song? Why am I I and then I have to sit down and sometimes I'll write. And my uh -huh. notebook, what the song is about, why I'm hearing it. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, so that's it. We we actually are the love that the world needs. Our physical bodies, the right. the energy that's emitted from our heart, is the love that the world needs. We are the ones we've been waiting for. People yes, we are. Some, like we're waiting for somebody else, waiting for a leader to do it for us. No. And I think people finally got the hint. When our president, our past president, did not get inaugurated for a second term, yes, they that we need to do it ourselves. Right. That was a that was loud and clear message that spirit gave me. Right. That, and and it's happening. It, if it is to me, it is up to me. It's happening. It's gathering momentum right yeah. now. That love feels good. And I never heard a president before Trump ever say, "I love you." And I never heard a president before Trump say God and Jesus right. and, and, and however you feel about Jesus, you know, the Muslims like Jesus, the Jews like Jesus, you need, you got to put things in perspective and rise above and just go to the red letters that talk about what Jesus said, because that's what he was here for is to teach us what 5D is. To right, understand exactly, what exactly, five things. exactly, and he's one of the, he's one of the few, he's one of the few human beings I prefer to call him Yeshua. Yes, I do Yeshua. too. I do too. I do. Too. I do <laughs> that, too. Actually, that was that was his name before um, Constantine butchered his. Anyway, what what Yeshua told me is that was his name before Constantine bastardized his, bastardized his story. Well. And, and, uh, and the story of Mary Magdalene uh, yeah. 300 years well, after well, that. Well, it was kind of a play on words because mm -hmm. he was not a bastard child. No, he was but, not. Um, but that's part of the Constantine. I mean, Constantine created wow. his universal church. These are, so these are things that are important to know. Yeah. So the word Catholic actually means universal. Exactly. He and, that intentionally. And so he created a, he, he decided to create a church that was universal for his entire kingdom. So he mm -hmm. pulled aspects from all of the different pagan belief systems of mm -hmm. all of the different um, areas within his kingdom, his um, empire, mm -hmm. and put all of those different beliefs into his universal religion and then set himself up as the first pope. Um, so he went, he was like, I'm the king of my religion and I'm the king of my empire. So he saw it as a way of unifying his entire empire mm -hmm. under him. In the process, though, he really, he butchered and bastardized Yeshua's story. Yeah. Um, to make it, to make it easily, to make it more palatable for the, um, the pagans. Do you know what the word pagan means? I looked it up one time, or it came to me one time. It was the country folk. Because oh, as, really? Yeah, because what happened, especially in the conversion of the Celts to the Catholicism was St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. There were people that lived out in the country that didn't get the memo, you see. And uh, so, uh, interesting. And so they were called the pagans 
they were just it, it wasn't a negative term at all it just, oh, it just a, okay so it, it meant the people that didn't get the mega the memo right okay. and it, it it grew into that but but let's okay, apply so, that to, so in in this particular case that it wasn't the pagans when constantine changed the story right it was for the people in his roman empire so it was right. really the romans and the and the outlying um right the the people who believed in demigods and right and their you know the their the gods of everything rather than the the one god so he brought it all together in this concept of the one god and then and then okay created the story of yeshua as a demigod mm -hmm. because the the romans would not follow a mere human right well then you have all of the gods and then the catholic church has all of the saints, oh, right? Yeah, they turned them into saints. That's So the Romans were still able to keep all of their gods. They just sainted them. Right. And so, but at least they had the female male balance in saints, you know, so that's because, good. But it's not because it's a, it's not because it was a Catholic thing. As you know, down the road, they, they completely oh, got, yeah. rid, got rid of the male female balance later. Mm-hmm. But um, but the but the Romans believed very much in both masculine and the the power of both the masculine and the feminine. Right. That, that went by the wayside for a very very long time, and we're just now finally bringing the divine feminine back to life. Right. In the last ten years, uh, you can see I have my divine feminine up here. This is uh, this is a, a this is a Della Robbia. It's an art form that was uh, in Italy. It was developed in the 1400s. Okay. Yeah, I have one on my on my for 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 your audience. I have one on my um my shelf back here. It's hey, look at your your flowers. We have flowers that are these are blue bon Texas blue bonnets. Oh, our <laughs> flowers are very similar. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually saw some blue bonnets. Growing on Knob Hill, by the way, which is in Redondo Beach for anybody who doesn't live there. But I saw all these blue bonnets down by Knob Hill. Uh, so we have a couple more minutes. What would be your advice to a spiritual newbie? And then also, please share everywhere that people can get in touch with you and what you do. Okay. Well, we didn't talk as much. We didn't talk nearly as much about the dimensions as we meant to. Oh, well, yeah, let's, right. let's go on to the, uh, so I'm going to talk about the fourth dimension a little bit more because yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Talking, none yeah. of the other spiritual teachers are talking about the fourth dimension. They're talking about 3d to 5d, but they're skipping right. the fourth. Right. The fourth dimension is a bridge between the third dimension and the fifth dimension. Right. It makes it possible for us to make that leap from third dimension, which is, which is, you know, the, the physical reality that is presently based in fear. Right. So we agreed, and, and, which is part of the Garden of Eden story, we agreed to allow fear to come to the planet. We left Gaia's garden and went out into the playground and learned the contrast of love and fear, light and darkness. We as a collective of souls agreed to that. So we agreed to lower our vibration into a third dimension in order to experience this contrast that is where we have been now what i was being shown about 10 years ago is that this planet would be a planet that would be a learning planet we know this is basically spirit school earth mm -hmm. that this would be a learning planet until the collective of souls agreed for it to be a planet of peace our collective of souls have now agreed that we're finished with learning through the contrast and now we're ready to bring heaven back to earth Oh, 5D, where we were when we were in the garden before we left the garden. Oh. So the fourth dimension allows us to move into the heaven, the, the consciousness of heaven, without having to physically leave our bodies. The fourth dimension allows us to be able to make that journey without having to transition out of physical form. The fourth dimension is where, it's where a lot of psychics go when they're when they're communicating with your right. your inner voice. So that's a psychic uh -huh. realm. Uh -huh. It's also where the demons are, and where a lot of interdimensional beings, uh -huh. beings okay. are. Which is why when kids are little, they can see like I, apparently I have all kinds of creatures that live in my house with me that my daughter <laughs> knew when she was little. <laughs> they're in the fourth dimension. Uh huh. And, um, and that's also where the, the dark entities have been hiding out. So the reason that they're being exposed right now and are, and by the way, are leaving the planet 
tons of them have been taken off planet already. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, um, the, but they're in that dimension. That's why we can't see them. They're not in our physical dimension. They were residing in the fourth dimension. Okay. And so the fourth dimension is kind of like, like um, it's not hell, but it's like limbo or spirit prison. Or it's a lot of religions that talk about the place that you go between earth and heaven where you can kind of sit and wait for judgment day. That's the fourth dimension. Then, so there's also a lot of ghosts are there as well. Ghosts who have not finished their transition process or stuff or, in the fourth dimension. Or, or they also called it purgatory. You know, pur purgatory. Pur pur there was purgatory and in limbo. That. I'm like, look, I'm just telling you what spirit told me. <laughs> what source told me is that the fourth dimension is where all the, it's like, so it has, it has gotten better. When the fourth dimension and the third dimension first converged in 2012, uh -huh. it felt like trudging through tar. Oh my gosh. It was so thick and so uh -huh. dark and so dense and so heavy that a lot of light workers got stuck in that in the density of it. Once right. we had to pop our heads up out of out of the the lower so the fourth dimension is basically two parts. There's a lower fourth dimension and a higher mm -hmm. fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. The lower fourth dimension is where all that dark, 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 heavy stuff is. That's where the dissension is. That's where the that's where the, the dark entities are. Uh-huh. The higher fourth dimension is when we start moving toward 5D, which is which we can get into once we start to shed all of the layers of darkness that have permeated our mind, body, heart, and spirit. So just by being in the third dimension, which is fear-based, we have put on layers and layers and layers and layers of fear-based beliefs. The heart starts to get encapsulated by fear. Um, it, what I was showing is it actually kind of clogs the heart's, the, the arteries of the energetic heart. So the heart can't work to its full potential. Fear encapsulates the mind so that the mind isn't able to see clearly. And, and so we put on all of these layers of fear, which is not even real. It's our perceptions of how things are. As we start to peel off those layers of false beliefs. Mm -hmm. And we become aware that of, of our own divine spirituality, all that dark stuff just starts to fall away. And we move into the higher fourth dimension, which is, which is love. And that's where we start connecting with spirit and, and our, our angels and guardians are, start, are able to, to begin communicating with us. And, and you said to expect some physical so ailments. There are, there are some physical things that come with that. So there is something that's called the Ascension Flu. <laughs> which, by the way, looks very much like COVID. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening to the planet. They're all just right. So a lot of, and that's the message that came in last year was that a whole a lot of people are experiencing ascension flu. Right. And, and there are, you know, and there are ascension symptoms that sometimes don't don't always show up as one particular flu. Uh -huh. In my case, literally within. A month of me having that message about the 3D, 4D converging, my, my, because I was streaming consciousness directly to my higher self, I was right. beginning the ascension process. So I was able to move up through the 4D, even though it hadn't converged, my consciousness was moving up through it. And wow. I was so sick. I oh, wow. So sick. I don't get sick. Like, <laughs> my son's had a cold this week. The cold came and went. It was a little bit of a sore throat for like three hours. Uh huh. Um, so, but I was really, really sick and I coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed, oh, wow. and coughed. Wow. I coughed for three weeks. Sounds like COVID to me. But you know what? And you know what spirit said to me? What? Purging. I knew that I was purging 40 plus years of fear-based beliefs wow. myself, from my physical body. Some people get diarrhea. And they're literally clearing old shit from their system. <laughs> I love a woman who cusses. <laughs> so there's a, so when, there's a when we symptom. have these, these symptoms, it's important right. that we sit and we ask ourselves, what is this? Right. Is this my body right. moving through the ascension process? What's oh. happening right now is that human beings are ascending so fast right now. Right. Um, right. Because of the 4D convergence and because so much light is coming to the planet. And especially since right. December 21st, when we moved into the age of Aquarius. Yes. We now we're in the photon belt. We're in the age of Aquarius. The, the light that's coming to our planet right now is pounding the planet. These are actually gamma waves pounding right. our planet. 
and they are changing our physical makeup. So it's incredibly uncomfortable. Right. People are getting massive headaches. Listen, so tired, uh, they're falling asleep at their desk. Yes. And yes. They're so tired they can't get out of bed. This is yes. all part of the ascension process. It's wow. our bodies are actually changing. Right. So I'd like you to. Um, I've got to move on to another uh, thing in just a second. So I like you to to share with everybody what you offer on your website. It's a, a free, you offer a free course or something, don't you? No, so what I have on my website is a free book that I just wrote yes. in November. Spirit, uh -huh. that it, Spirit said I needed to get this thing out. Uh, right. Rise Up. It's a simplified guide to the Great Awakening, spiritual okay. and the Ascension. And it's called, uh, and you go to Victoria Reynolds. It's Victoria Reynolds slash Okay, yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to push, I'm going to put this all over the place. I'm going to spread the news about you. I love your show. I love your message. I love how you share. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I, it was so great to see you on Charlie Ward. I went, oh my gosh, she's doing it. She's actually <laughs> doing. It. And um, so I will see you next week. Yes, I hope I will be in Redondo Beach next week. Hopefully, everything will be normal. We'll I see. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have I have very few things on my calendar next week, so I've kept. Oh, great! Okay, and we're going to do this again because my audience is going to love you. So, thank you, Victoria. Everybody, visit VictoriaReynolds dot com and see why I'm excited about her and why Charlie Ward was telling everybody about Victoria. So uh, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. You. I love you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Let's see here. There we go.